You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 146. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom. And I'm Jordan Andrews. Yay! Woo! Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can find this show, plus many other cool podcasts like the all-new Anti-Fanboy, Feed It Comics, and Ultimate Face Palm at rhymeswithgeek.com. You can also find us at backissueheroes.com, the home of classic comics on the web. And if you like this show, please subscribe to us on either iTunes or Stitcher. So, Jordan, now we're continuing our uh, our look at Silver Age Aquaman. Yes, all the stories uh, on this episode come from Showcase Presents Aquaman Volume 1, or they're reprinted from in, in that book, rather. Um, and the first uh, story we've got to talk about is The Human Flying Fish, uh, from Adventure Comics number 272. It was written by Robert Bernstein, with art by the terrific Ramona Fraden. And um, this introduces the first uh, supervillain that Aquaman uh, fights in his solo adventures. Definitely. And it's a pretty good one. Yeah. A little, a little disturbing. Yeah. The human flying fish. Like, I was introduced to this character in an issue of Super Friends, so I didn't know if he was, like, a real... DC villain, right. or if he was just from cartoons, but or no. what his backstory even was. Like, right, exactly. How did he become? Because it was like a weird team up with the penguin and the cheetah and the um, toy man. I think it was stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah. Um, his his backstory is kind of cre- it's it's, kind it's, of creepy. it's creepy. Let's yeah. uh, let's just talk about it. Okay, so the splash page is the human flying fish get, making a getaway. Right. And Aquaman is apparently foiled. Yeah. But does he fly fly or is he more like gliding? It, he launches out of the water and can remain airborne for a time. Yeah. Okay. So he can't actually fly. But pretty weak. Yeah. <laughs> pretty weak. It, but it opens up on uh, Aquaman and Aqualad chasing a speedboat and these guys you don't know who are watching from a from a lighthouse. Mhm. And they're watching, and Aquaman captures them by surrounding them with whales. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, these guys in the lighthouse are, are bad. Mm. They're villains. So we've got Dr. Krill and Vic Bragg mm-hmm. in the lighthouse watching. And Dr. Krill is coming up with an ingenious plan on how to thwart Aquaman once and for all. <laughs> of course. By turning Vic Bragg into this creepy flying fish by surgically... Like altering him. Altering he puts his like, body. Like kind of wings and stuff as implants and stuff. Yeah, and, and he and cuts super... gills into his... Oh, uh, yeah, so that he could breathe underwater right. and stuff. And all of this is inferred, obviously. I mean, it says... But, yeah, it's super creepy. Yeah. Like, ew, su- superpowers via surgery? Yeah, if you if you Gross. actually think about this, that's the kind of thing that kids probably, you know, gloss over. Like, in Disney movies, how sure. when you watch them again as an adult, it's like, oh, there was some stuff in there that I didn't catch as a kid. Serious racism. <laughs> like the crows from Dumbo. <laughs> um, but... I was when I was a kid. I remember that, and I was like, "They talk funny." Yeah, and I didn't. And that's, there was I, no cultural right. understanding there. But now you're like, "Oh, well, that's, oh, that's ooh. kind of bad." Yeah, but yeah, I don't think I don't think my kids would see like they'd see. Oh, they're putting gills into his body. That's cool. Sure. It was like, oh my god, this guy is cutting slits into his neck. <laughs> right. It's interesting to look at it from you know our 21st century lens. To look at something from 50, 60 years ago and be like, oh my god, that's right. weird. Yeah. But, you know, at the time, this is just fantasy. Oh, cool. They they surgically, they gave him gills. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Of course, this is before the $6 million man, but. Sure. But, but anyway, yeah. so they, they do undergo the, the whole process and they say he's going to remain unconscious for days and it'll take months to recuperate. But oh, yeah. Then, you know. Skip ahead to when he's recuperated, mm-hmm. and he's doing his tricks, flying. Now, Vic Flag was like he was like an Olympic. He was an Olympic swimmer. He yeah, was, yeah. They, they mentioned good, that. Very good swimmer. 
So that he's got that going for him, but then uh, the doc here gives him everything else. Right. So he, I guess, doesn't waste any time rehabbing or anything. He goes from there was no muscle atrophy. He just was knocked out for a few months and now can ah, right go back to Olympic swimming. Of course. Uh, so he catches a seagull in midair, and they're like, "Okay, he's ready." Right. <laughs> And so Aquaman is overseeing some things, some... Uh, what kind of things? Excavations. Right. They're getting strong boxes out of old sh pirate ships and... Uh, <laughs> of course they are. Yeah. And removing idols from the ocean floor with huge, uh, I don't know, was it a ruby? Sure. Sure. <laughs> anyway, the human flying fish tries to uh, get in on that action both times. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time... Aquaman is, uh, you know, trying to catch him, but he flies out of the water. And he's like, "Whoa, I've never seen that before." Right. Uh, and how does he? Yeah, I mean, he just, I mean, he gets away with the strong box. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool because Aquaman can't fly. Right. He can do something that Aquaman can't. Right. But then Aquaman's, you know, powers. I mean, he's got super strength and he can swim probably better than this guy anyway. And Definitely. yeah, I mean he's a human, so he, he and he can control all the sea creatures. He's still like a, a candy ass compared to Aquaman, right? But he there's gets away just the, first the time. flying thing. Yeah, that's all he's got, really. Yeah. So, but that helps him. You know, the first time he gets away, but then Aquaman says, "We'll get you next time," and you know, then they're yeah. digging up the ancient artifact, and so he tries the same trick again. He grabs the giant ruby off the thing's head. Uh huh. And heads out of the water. Off the idol, or off of the idol. Yeah. Uh, but then Aquaman gets a gets an octopus to grab him and swing him around real fast. Is it any old octopus, or is it Topo? It just says one of his octopus. This. Oh, time. okay. I mean, you would kind of always assume it's Topo. Right. But you know. But he flings. But him they around. usually specify if it is. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> but. Uh, the human flying fish doesn't get away this time because the octopus launches Aquaman at him out of the water and he grabs the the jewel, the ruby thing, uh -huh. but uh, the human flying fish still gets away. So there's still more to be done, more traps for Aquaman to spring. Right. So he makes a, a fake distress call uh, for a... A carrier plane with uranium. Oh, okay. It's like, this is a carrier plane with uranium. We're going down. Oh, man. And Vic Bragg says, oh, it might be a trap. And the huge learned doctor says... Admiral Akbar yeah, agrees. Yeah, exactly. And... <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. No. It's okay. Yeah. But uh, the, then the doctor is like, nah, it's probably not a trap. Let's just Let's just do it anyway. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. So, <laughs> another thing that I think is... Well, we'll I guess we'll get to that. But, uh... They grab the box that's supposed to have uranium. Yeah. And they make, try to make their getaway, but Aquaman gets some eels to get in his way, zaps the guy, <laughs> he drops the Now, which box. guy? The human flying fish? The human flying fish. Yeah, okay. So he can't escape the water. The eels get in the way. But then, Aquaman sends Swordfish to go poke <laughs> the the fuel tank right, right. of the helicopters yeah. to make it start leaking fuel. Okay. Because, so the helicopter comes down to try to swoop and get the human flying fish and make the getaway. Yeah. But they go down. The helicopter goes down too because it doesn't have any fuel left. Hmm. And that made me wonder. How PETA would feel <laughs> about Aquaman. Oh. I think that would make a really interesting kind of dark story for Aquaman. Like, okay. his fish have to do whatever he tells them to do. Right, because he reaches into their hindbrain and just makes them do stuff. Right, so he's... A swordfish couldn't actually penetrate right. the fuel tank of a helicopter. So a really interesting kind of dark story would be Aquaman trying to send all these fish out of the water and then just dying and smacking into the side of this fuel tanker. Well, right. Um, it's like throw. It would be like throwing a, a, a wet rag wrapped around a rock. Right. 
you know. Um, but uh, I just think it can make for some really interesting stories. Like, well, yeah, kind of Aquaman is this sort of psychopathic anti-hero. Like in your your imagined right. dark story, not, okay. not an actual Aquaman story. Yeah, like, Aquaman's a stand-up guy, right? But he, he even though goes, he's constantly pawning his duties off on others, right? He kind of goes rogue for a day, and like I can make my fish do whatever they want or whatever I want them to do. Right, is drunk with power. Right, and so he he's still this superhero guy, but he's like I don't care about these fish's lives, and you know whatever. So what happened? So Aquaman defeated the human flying yeah, fish. Yeah, so or? they were trying to save the human flying fish. Yeah. The helicopter was. Right. And the swordfish poked the holes in the fuel lines. The helicopter goes down. The flying fish goes down. Yeah. Aquaman scoops them all up. Okay. End of story. Pretty neat. <laughs> neat ending there. Hey, there's Aquaman's first supervillain and... Dispatched. Yeah. <laughs> so the next story we've got to read is Around the World in 80 Hours uh, from Adventure Comics number 273. Uh, written again by uh, Robert Bernstein, um, art by Ramona Frayden. The premise for this one is hilarious. Yes. I mean, obviously it's a take on the, you know, the Jules Verne classic, but this guy is writing sort of a follow-up where somebody can swim around the world in 80 hours. Yeah, do you remember the, did you ever hear the story, it's a real life story, it's uh, the newspaper woman, Nellie Bly, she went around the world in like... 79 days or something like that. Um, she beat the Jules Verne um, book. Yeah, I just think it's hilarious how in this first panel they're saying, your novel about a swimming champion going around the world in in 80 hours, we can't, we can't publish this. Right. Like, it couldn't happen, so we can't publish it. Like, that's ever stopped a book from being published before. Right. This is... Out of, this is outrageous. It's like, just too fantastical. It's being printed in a comic book where a guy can breathe underwater and communicate with fish. Right. And it's just too far out there. We it's can't. Just, we can't no. print this. We can't but print traveling this. around the world in less than four days is, <laughs> is that what? I'm not. My math is not good. Seventy-two is three, three days, days, so it's a little over three days. Okay. I mean, thank you. Obviously, I don't think that could actually happen. Well, you could do it now. You'd just be on a plane the whole time. Right. But I mean, so I mean, it would still suck. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, it couldn't happen. But the right. fact that they're like, we can't print this. It's it could never happen. It's just it, it's sort of ironic, I guess. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like the irony. And it's so funny because you know Jeff and I talk a lot about the Mort Weisinger edited books um, when he and I record. Um, but it's usually talking about Superman. But you know, he was he was editing Adventure Comics also, which had. Uh, I think uh, Legion and Green Arrow and Aquaman stories. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of part of that wackadoo um, uh, Silver Age DEC element, but they kind of get overshadowed by the you know the weird things that that uh, are going on in the Superman books. So, yeah, I don't know. no, that makes sense. But it's the same kind of stories. Right. So anyway, so they say they won't print his books unless you know because somebody can't actually do it, and then Aquaman mm -hmm. says, "Well, I'll do it." To this, to this guy. Oh, man. Like, Why not? Who cares? And uh, the author says, if you help me, I'll give half of my book's earnings to a charity for semen. The uh, retired semen. Right. Like Let's be clear. Boat people. Well, not like refugee boat people. Well, no. Like people that sailed... Sailors. sailors. Retired sailors. Why would they... What, yeah, why don't they just say sailors? Well, because why that's... These, the, both terms are applicable. It was the 60s. They're interchangeable. Yeah. It was the 60s. It was the 60s. They were smoking a lot of dope. <laughs> this is the early 60s. Smoking so. dope and calling people semen. So... Let's just move on. Yeah. Because that, you know, what we think of as the, quote-unquote, the 60s, mm -hmm. really didn't come around until like 65 or 66. Sure. And this is, what, oh, 61? This is just 60. 1960? Middle, yeah, June 1960. So. I'm trying to remember when the Justice League was going. I think it was like 60 or 61. So, I'm trying to, yeah, anyway. Yeah. So Aquaman says, I'll swim around the world in 80 hours. Aqualad says, I'll come too. And so they're making all these preparations. Mm -hmm. And a supervillain syndicate gets word of it. Are they a supervillain syndicate? Is it a bunch of supervillains or is it just Oh, I guess it's just criminals. Aquaman later refers to them as Smugglers Incorporated, like they're a, an actual business. Okay. 
They don't, I don't well, do sometimes a, like a sometimes in like old radio shows or television or like you know whatever mm -hmm. a group a criminal syndicate would call themselves something like that. Okay, so it's not like a, we're registered with the government no. as a corporation. I just think that would be hilarious. Like we're smugglers incorporated. Right. No. Um, <laughs> I think that would be great. That is definitely like straight from oh somebody that read a lot of pulps. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. So that, makes that, sense. that title. I just think it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy your observations. Oh, thanks. Jordan. So this guy with a really long cigarette, like a Cruella de Vil style one. Oh, with the cigarette yeah, holder? I didn't well, know. Like, the, like the penguin. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. But he doesn't look like the penguin. I love the penguin. The penguin's great. The he's penguin one of my favorite a, Batman villains. But villain. really, he's a dumb villain. He, well, yeah. I mean, a lot of Batman's villains kind of are dumb. Yeah, let me tell you a story. I'm okay. going to get on a tangent here. So I went to coffee with this girl. Uh, a girl that I went to college with. I don't know if you met, but anyway. Cute girl, nerd girl, yes. Nerd boner good. in full effect. I won't name her. But anyway, um, but I went to coffee with this girl one time. And because we had like kind of been chatting a little bit on Facebook. And okay, I'm like, okay, cool. We've got some common interests. So I meet her. And she's, like, busy, like, uploading, like, doing a project at the coffee thing, like, uploading and, and, and like, uh, 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 Googling? No, uploading files and, like, converting them and stuff, like, doing a thing. And then she's, like, asking me, like, questions with very super specific answers. Like, mm -hmm. I can, like, what I think about something, but there is a right or wrong answer. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, and... It's a trap! It was, kind of, and it was, it, I really liked the girl, but then I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I'm doomed, this was like the worst, like, date or, or whatever, ever, um, but anyway, she was like, you know, we're talking, and she's like, Batman has the super best, best villains, I'm like, well, they're good, but I, I don't know, the, the, the Flash has got some really great villains, you know, yeah. like, I'm like, uh, he, Batman does not have the best rogues gallery, if you ask me. Sure. I like super villains with powers, you know? Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, you can't have supervillains with powers when you when you've got a superhero without them. Mm, that's not true. I, well, mean, I mean, he has some with powers. Right. I mean, I think Mister Freeze, Clayface, Doctor Phosphorus, um, uh, Blockbuster, and uh, Bane, I guess. Sort of. Yeah. You know, sort of, kind of. You know. Um. So he has a few, and I I think it's it's a cool idea to like. You don't have, like, so much of the powers, but your villains do. Yeah. But, but yeah, like, Batman's villains are all just crazy people. Eh, or the, or idiots right. with a dumb gimmick. Like, uh, no, Batman doesn't have the best villains. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Spider-Man has a great rogues gallery. Oh, gosh. I love Daredevil's Spider rogues gallery, which gets really under, is really underplayed. <laughs> like, people don't talk about it very much. Yeah. I mean, and, Colin Farrell as Bullseye was pretty... Terrible. Terrible. And that whole movie is awful. Yeah. And yeah. and it's it's sad because Daredevil is such a great superhero. Absolutely. But but I love his <clears throat> but pre Bullseye, his pre Kingpin and Bullseye, Rogues Gallery. You know you get this is such a bad tangent. We need to get back to Aquaman. But but Daredevil. I mean he's got the Gladiator. The well the Matador sucks. But the Jester, <laughs> um, Leapfrog, um, the Mass Marauder. Uh, this is t no, I'm, I'm blowing it, um, but anyway, Daredevil has a lot of cool villains in the Silver Age, yeah, and they're so kind of wild. But Batman doesn't necessarily. Have oh, and Mister Fear, the best Rogues Gallery. No, he's got the most recognized Rogues Gallery, well, absolutely, yeah. which is not the same as the best. Right. Like the Joker is a great villain, okay, <laughs> but you can't win out on one guy. Right, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aquaman does not have a very good rogues gallery. No, Aquaman has a terrible rogues gallery. Yeah. He has two great villains and then like a few meh guys and that's it. Yeah. Because he's got Black Manta and Ocean Master. Who are which, awesome. Who are both great. So great. And then you get the Human Flying Fish who sucks. Just terrible. And there's the Scavenger and the Fisherman. Who are, you know... They're, they're okay. okay. But, you know. And I think, you know, there's a couple other guys that are recurring foes but really... Um, yeah, not so much. Nope. Um, I don't think I don't think we ever see smugglers incorporated ever again. No, I, and that's unfortunately I think that's like the weakness of Aquaman. It's like I I personally like him in a team up or a team setting because mm -hmm. 
there's other somebody really cool to play off of. Sure. Um, you know, there are great Aquaman stories, but there's a lot of it. It's just mediocrity. Sure. So, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to this story. Sorry about that little Oh, no, it's fine. So they're, they're at the – after the – after Smugglers Incorporated says we're going to get him, we have his whole itinerary where he's going to be all the time over the next 80 hours. We've got to do something. Yeah. yeah. It never says why they're trying to take him out. It really, really never says what he's done in the past to even get these people upset at him. But they are. And cut away from there and – they're underneath the gold. Uh, Aquaman and Aqualad are underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, and Aqualad <laughs> is taking some glamour shots of Aquaman for the newspapers. Do you notice in these stories he always makes Aqualad do all the hard work? Yeah. While he's like, I'm gonna go talk to so and so while you take care of the actual stuff we need to do. Right. Exactly. So anyway. So they I, get uh, they get swimming again after the the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. And they're in really shallow water. Yeah. And then all of a sudden these planes come toward them and Aqualad mm-hmm. is thinking, oh, it's more people trying to take our pictures. Yeah. But then the, the, the planes start turning on the guns and they're mm-hmm. like, oh no, we don't have anywhere to dive. These people are going to tear us apart. That's a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. In th- because in this, Aquaman doesn't have the... I mean, he's not invulnerable to bullets in the Silver Age. That, <laughs> that gets later. Well, age. it's not that he's invulnerable even currently. It's just... They break his skin, but they don't go into the muscle Maybe. because he's got the the muscle density to kind of just brush him off. But you would think like it would still like crack his bones. Yeah, probably. The like if you if you shot him in the head, something you know, would happen. I don't something. know. Yeah. Like so, what? I saw this comedian. <laughs> I'm just gonna be all tangents tonight. That's okay. I saw this comedian. It was on YouTube, and he was talking about like. You know, you know Peter Weller, the guy who played RoboCop. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, he's like a college professor of like anthropology or something, and he was talking. He's like, "How could you not be like in that classroom, that guy's classroom, and just raise your hand and be like, uh, what would happen if somebody shot RoboCop in the mouth?' <laughs> you know, like, yeah. right? Exactly. How could you counter that? It would just it would hit the back of his mouth <laughs> and then ricochet around after the hits all the metal and stuff, and then he's screwed. Yeah. yeah, but and I forget why I made that reference. Oh, because of Aquaman. Because Aquaman's yeah, skin yeah, yeah. deflecting bullets. Right. So to get out of this sticky situation, the shallow water, the gun yeah. shooting at him, Aquaman yeah. brings in giant squid. Uh huh. Who, biologically speaking, are larger than six feet, which is how shallow the water is supposed to be. Okay. And they get the giant squid to shoot ink at the planes, and the planes go down and crash, and they get away. So, you know, a little shifty biology, but we'll get past sure. that. Sure. <laughs> so they keep swimming. Apparently they've been at it for 10 hours. And uh, a U.S. Navy fleet is giving them a 21-gun salute. <laughs> and then they go a couple minutes later and see these pirates that are trying to shoot at them again. Yeah. So apparently the... the Smugglers Inc. has radioed ahead and is trying to take care of business some more. Hmm. They dispatch Aquaman and Aqualad dispatch them this time with flying fish flying in the formation of an SOS to, yeah. to the Navy <laughs> vessels. It's and so ridiculous. It is. The you flying know? fish. I think I mean, the it's... flying fish is my least favorite Aquaman used telepathic ability. Yeah, I mean, gosh, there's a bunch of fish that he'll just, they're like his go-tos. Yeah, and flying fish are definitely one of them. The luminous fish <sighs> are the other ones. Like, uh, or swordfish or sawfish. Using yeah. them to saw through things that, like, that wouldn't That's work. That's not what they're for. Using whales a lot. I'm trying to think what are some of the other ones. Well, I mean, he uses a lot of whales, a lot of swordfish, a lot like... Octopus, Any, any right. of the, the fish with metaphorical names... Oh, all, with all like like sawfish, hammerhead right. shark, all yeah. that business. Yeah, but then I, I and, and we'll we'll be able to point it out in some of these stories. But like, there's like there is no such fish as that. Right. You know, for the most part. And usually, what they can do is exaggerated, just because of the name. Like, yeah. There are, and such that's I think that's why fish, so many people but... point to Aquaman as being ridiculous because the things that he does with the fish and... puns are too. 
damn high. Well, and it's not just that, but it's like the 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 ridiculousness of what he do, uses these animals for right. is like watching Hanna Barbera cartoons. It's like, all right, Aquaman and his pal Jabberjaw, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Aquaman meets Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest is awesome. Though. I love Johnny Quest. Okay, it's amazing. So anyway, so the the U.S. Navy gets the pirates out of there. Aquaman and Aqualad keep on going. So then they bring out the big guns, the Smugglers Incorporated, and launch a nuke in the middle of the ocean. Oh, really? And they say, Aquaman's going to have to swim through this, and he's going to get irradiated and die. Oh, man. That's intense. Fortunately... Aquaman 4, the quest for peace. (laughs) (laughs) Fortunately, Aquaman's fishy friends phone ahead and say, hey... A bunch of our dudes just got killed off over here. There's a nuke going on. Maybe you want to circumvent this area. What did you say? Circumvent. I know it's actually circumvent. I just it's from Arrested Development. It's a thing. Oh, okay. I did not get the reference. <laughs> <laughs> so he has. Let's see. He has shark and sawfish friends. Of course he does. Tear up a sunken schooner. 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 You're that doing one, it. That one You're doing it again. Well. I didn't actually know that one. That wasn't a pun. Okay. So there's lead in the in the schooner. So Superman the... can't see through it. Of course, well, he's not in the story. So yeah, right. Not... It's a different purpose. Different purpose. Yeah. So he's got the sawfish. Don't you mean porpoise? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh, awful. So he's got the, the shark and the sawfish friends, is what he calls them, tearing up the lead and using it to build a lead suit around Aquaman and Aqualad so they yeah. don't get irradiated. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah radiation. Right, it's a thing. It's a thing. And then they just have them push them into the current, and then it's just Aquaman and Aqualad being pushed along <laughs> by the ocean's current around the atomic blast. And then Smuggler's Inc. is back there, ah, foiled again. <laughs> and they've got testicular cancer. <laughs> I don't know why that cancer, but it's the funniest cancer of all. It's probably the funniest cancer. I mean, it's pretty easily detectable, and, like, you just, you can get surgery to remove it. So, you know, for the most part, it's survivable, and you can make fun of it a little. Yeah. Um, you can't really make fun of, like, leukemia or anything like that. That's that's too much. But <laughs> testicular cancer, you can make fun of it. I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to be a testicular cancer survivor. Well, no, but it would You know what I mean? mean? You could probably <laughs> the guy without balls. You could probably you know? laugh about it if you had testicular cancer. You probably laugh about it, like dude. A, I would be like, later, here's like the thing. You, know, you know what would happen if if I was a testicular cancer survivor? I would get fat and I would seem gay <laughs> to everyone who talked to me. <laughs> That's interesting. Think about it. Yeah. Well, I guess it maybe. Gosh, and I would have big boobs like Meatloaf had in, well, in Fight Club. Well, you'd have to lose both of them to do that. But you could also right. take hormone replacement therapy. That happens. Yeah. That exists nowadays. This is such a weird thing to get into. Yeah, well. So they don't get testicular cancer. After Mumra died of testicular cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that? I didn't. It was on an episode of... Uh, Robot Chicken, where they were talking about Thundercats. Oh. And they talked about, like, in the future, like, Mumra was dead. Or... <laughs> <laughs> of testicular cancer. Oh, well, that's rough, yeah. buddy. Yeah, anyway. So after the, the A-bomb doesn't work, they... Who is thro- they? The Smuggler's Inc. Oh, okay, thank you. Smuggler's Inc. throw magnetic mines in Aquaman and Aqualad's way. All up in their respective grills. Exactly. So they hightail it to an <laughs> island before... Oh, and I think I missed that earlier. Oh, with an important plot point. Well, not really. Important editing flub. Oh, oh, yeah, pretty oh. Great, pretty great. So this panel says, As you know, Aqualad and I would perish if we had to be away from land for more than an hour. So the legitimate thing is they can't be... He means away from water. Yeah, they can't be away That's from a typo. water for more than an hour. Mort Weisinger, shame on you for laying that it's slip by. It's a typo, by. but it was printed. Well, and Robert Bernstein for making the error, but yeah. it happens. Well, yeah, you, absolutely. You're on a writing, you know, you're on a marathon writing thing, and it's like two in the morning, and you interchange land and sea. It happens. So they hightail it for an island to get through <laughs> the mines. They want okay. to get through the mines. 
and they make it onto this island, but they say we got to cross the island now, and we only have an hour right. before our water supply runs low. Oh man! And their water supply <laughs> runs low. It's an hour later, and they're still on the island. Man, there's a desert on this island in the middle of the ocean, which oh, a desert island, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just I don't know the scientific accuracy. If you're surrounded by water, you're gonna get you think clouds it, and rain and, and magic and yeah. stuff. Not magic, but you know what I'm saying. But in the he, magic of science says yes. that doesn't really wash. But go ahead. Right. In Aquaman's utility belt, <laughs> which is nev not I, mentioned much. No, but it's a thing now. He has oxygen and hydrogen containers. Like capsules? Yeah, capsules with, with So he's oxygen, able to create water? Yeah, oxygen and hydrogen in gas form. And this is actually semi like the most scientifically accurate thing I've seen in Aquaman. Way to go, Robert Bernstein. Because obviously Way to science. The hydrogen and oxygen gas, if they combine, it doesn't like just give you water. But they become a comet or something. if you combust the two together, mm -hmm. then it will create... It will, the reaction will form that produces water, and it will fall as rain after it gets blown up into the... Isn't that kind of how when they seed rain clouds with, yeah. like, what is it, silver nitrate or something? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Seed I powers. I, I got them. Science yeah. powers. But it's, it's like the same thing that happened with the Hindenburg. Like, they Ex used gaseous hydrogen, and there was oxygen in the atmosphere. Right. So when the Hindenburg blew up, like, it, there was rain and stuff that happened. Oh, like I Like, legitimate, know. real rain. Blame it on the rain. <laughs> Man, and, and you, know, I've, you know, everybody's seen that Hindenburg explosion footage, which yeah. is amazing that somebody captured it. Right. Man, it was filmed it in... Was in it was filmed in Explodovision. <laughs> And that was in 1937, so that was like... Was it 37? Yeah. Yeah, that so, Okay, yeah. 37. So it's just, it's crazy. But anyway, the story is almost at a close. Yes. All tangents aside now. Sorry. No, it's I'm fine. I'm the worst. It's okay. Uh, th they were good tangents. I think they were pretty Oh, thank good. you. As tangents go, they were solid. <laughs> solid, Jackson. So, so they open up the capsules, the gas comes out, Aquaman lights a match, tosses it in there. Blows the reaction sky high, and then rain starts coming down. Yeah. And Aquaman and Aqualad get in under this rain, soak up some water, make it the rest of the way, and that's the, that's our story. Except for <laughs> months later in the publisher's office, as this last panel will tell us, Aquaman is in print the same day that the author's book is published about the whole 80-hour round-the-world excursion. Yeah. For... Smashing the International Smuggling Ring, Smugglers Incorporated. Uh-huh. Yes. But Aquaman says, Unfortunately, rounding up those smugglers took more than 80 hours. <laughs> and there we go. Uh. <laughs> yeah, some of those, some of these last, it's hit or miss with these last panels. Like, the jokes will be great, like, super funny, kind of sea-related puns. It, this is, it makes me think of another, like, Thundercats kind of thing. Yeah. Because remember, like, every episode of Thundercats, it's like the Thundercats are, like, standing around in a circle, like, ha, 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 yeah. ha, ha, ha. Yeah, laughing to themselves for their yeah. next... Which yeah. is weird, because... What what was the villain guy's name? Mumra? Mumra. Mumra. And then there were the he mutants. He was a creepy dude. Mumra is, like, the scariest cartoon villain ever. Yeah. Like, He-Man's is almost as bad. As Skeletor? Yeah, Skeletor. Like, well, Skeletor... He also kind of looks like a Scooby-Doo villain. Sort of. Skeletor would be the greatest Scooby-Doo villain of all. He would. He would. But, yeah. but Mumra is terrifying. Like, he legitimately is, terrifying. Yeah. So the fact that at the end of every episode, they're like, ah, this is great. I like, had this old, you won't get the reference, but my old roommate, I, I pointed out to like, uh, we both really like the thrash metal band Overkill. Mm -hmm. And the singer from Overkill, Bobby Blitz, strangely enough, looks like Mumra. <laughs> How you're, do you do that? I don't know, but you're like... Or, or Mumra looks like Bobby, whatever. But sure, either way. but I was he was like what? And then like watch some Thundercats. He's like, oh my god, it does, it's true. Is that like how uh, John Constantine is supposed to look like Sting? Probably. Maybe. maybe I don't think like it was. I don't. I don't think Thundercats was like they're like. <laughs> they're they just know like, all man, about they death love metal. 
Well, not death metal, but oh, thrash metal. They're thrash different metal. subgenres. Sorry. But anyway. I'm new. It's okay. I'm I, don't, new I, don't, I don't expect you to know all these things. <laughs> but <laughs> what a weird place to go. But yeah, no. I don't think anyone was thinking like, hey, let's make Mumra look like Blitz from Overkill. Right. But. <laughs> it's a happy coincidence. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, anyway. Um, next story. Let's go. This is a good one. I mean, it's short. It'll be short, but it's a good one. I'm not. Yeah. Um, the story is called Aqua Queen. It's from uh, Adventure Comics number 274, uh, written by Robert Bernstein, uh, and uh, art by Ramona Fraden. And this one is just, Aquaman is judging a beauty contest. <laughs> it's like, all of the best stories start Gosh. out that way. So he's and judging this beauty contest. This is such a, like, Silver Age plot line. Like, what? Right. Like, Batman will be like, here, let me, at ribbon cutting ceremonies, and like, judging crap like that. Right. With big smile on his face. Like, what the hell? Well, and that's the thing. Is, I feel like if superheroes were real, it would be a lot of that. Yeah? It would be. I think it would be. I get... Okay, okay. I just... I don't know if there would be a lot for them to do after a while. It would be either complete pandemonium, like New York getting attacked every other day and them just being there. Sure. Or it would be a lot of nothing. A lot of ribbon cuttings, a lot of beauty pageants. So are of, you saying... The DC is more realistic than Marvel. I don't know if I've read enough Marvel to figure that out, but because Marvel is kind of a little more real world rooted, right? Um, traditionally, from what I've read of like Daredevil, that's very true. Yeah, and there's a lot of real world references, and so I don't know if DC is more realistic than Marvel necessarily because. Typically, the opposite is what most right. people perceive. But your comment just kind of made me think of that. Yeah, so. I would just think that if superheroes were real, it would just be it would be a lot of ribbon cuttings. It would be a lot of you know just kind of events that they went to. Okay, you know? okay. There would be high profile. You know, oh, what is it? Uh, is it Jupiter's Legacy where the celebrity where the the superheroes' kids are celebrities? Yeah. And that book. Oh, that book. That book is so great. I it, love that book. Come on, Mark Miller. Can you get it out on time? <laughs> I want an issue more it than every six months. It's almost been a full year since the last issue was released. And it was it was like six it months was, between three and, and yeah, four. It was March 2014 that the last one was released. And it, we're supposed to get it this week. Really? This Wednesday, maybe next. I don't remember. But it's supposed to be Number soon. five? It's Number five. Soon. Nice. And so more I'm going to look forward tangents. to it unless it gets pushed back. Yeah, I wouldn't count on it. Like that's why I I, I dropped um, the Sandman Prelude book. I can't, I can't even remember what it's called now because Overture? Sandman Overture. Thank you. Yeah, good Not that it wasn't great because no, it I've read the first couple issues, but it's coming out so late. I'm like, I'll just wait for the trade. Right. So anyway. So so Aqua Queen. Aqua, Aquaman is judging this beauty contest. <laughs> gives it to somebody else. And realizes, and then this heiress gets up and says, you should have picked me. And Aquaman says, well, you weren't the best one. Oh, right, right. So, and so no, she, I shouldn't have. Yeah, so no, I shouldn't have. So she does what, you know, your Paris Hilton's and your Kim Kardashian's do. Oh. And just spends the rest of their time and money in an ill-fated attempt to, you know, show the rest of the world just how right they were to reject them. Right. Okay. But uh, it's really <clears throat> that's really the gist of this story. Okay. Is you've got this girl named Dale. Right. Well, I guess I'd be kind of upset if I was a girl and my name was Dale, but you know, you know, maybe back then it was different. It's one of those actually you can go either way names. I know you think like, hey Dale, right. like dude. Yeah, I mean Daryl Hannah, sure. That's, that's sure, but but yeah. But anyway, Daryl Hannah. Well, okay, that's an interesting reference. <laughs> that's just you know close to Dale. Hey, it's so funny because Aquaman and she was in Splash. Yeah, the Mermaid. <laughs> yeah. That's I really want to see like I wish Aquaman had more interactions with Lori Lamaris, the Mermaid. But that would sort of make sense, wouldn't it? Yes, but but uh, also I think it would it would it would automatically bring Superman into it. Mm. You know, so and yeah, we saw what happened with uh, Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane. We did that a couple. What was it? A couple podcasts ago. Yeah, yeah, that didn't end well for Aquaman. Poor guy. <laughs> it's okay. So all that really happens in the story is that this heiress feels bad that she didn't get picked. Yeah. So she spends a bunch of money 
on stuff to make her super fast and to make it appear as if this is so terrible it's like she's communicating with oh chicks like, just trying to get attention that's right. what this whole story is yeah, about exactly which is really a kind of a negative but it's message. also a lot of i mean it, it's what we see in the high profile thing like with kim kardashian oh, and with Paris Hilton, like just celebrity in general just trying can to we not attention. say their names okay sorry. but no it's okay like please but i get with the cult of celebrity which is yeah. like what we do in America. Right. And so there's like... But the great thing about this one is this girl finally at the very end gets down to Earth once Aquaman figures out... Because the whole thing is Aquaman's trying to figure out how she can swim as fast as he can. Right. Or faster. How... And, you know, the answer is money. She's oh. able to buy these gadgets that makes her swim fast. And mm. She's able to buy fish poison to make the fish not obey Aquaman and do all this stuff. Aquaman figures it out, calls her out on it. And she's like, oh, okay, I feel ashamed, which is something that I feel like a lot of modern celebrities don't right. feel. Well, that's the whole thing. It's completely shameless. Yeah. So anyway. And that's that's the story. That's it? That's Does She learned her lesson. She learned her lesson. Um, and then Aquaman's like, you know what? Maybe you are a queen. Here's a, a, a notion I just want to bring up. If you had... Like, boatloads of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, money's no object. Would you use your wealth to become a superhero? Oh, man. I don't know. That seems like a lot of pressure. Well, I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah. It's a hypothetical. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of ribbon cuttings, you know? <laughs> That's a lot of ribbon cuttings. I don't know if I want to do that many ribbon cuttings. Because there really wouldn't be that much to do. What if you were, like, really, like, hardcore, like, Batman, like, like not, like... Like, post-crisis Batman, not into that crap, mm -hmm. and we're like, I am the knight. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> that kind of superhero. Yeah, that might be interesting. I don't know if I would do it, though. I like reading about superheroes. But yeah. I don't know if, in a practical sense, it would be like, oh. Are you really that into fighting? You know? Yeah. Like, if I had powers... I would definitely become a superhero. You just go around and just kick some ass. I might be a little supervillain for, like... A couple days and then be a superhero you know what i mean go fight yourself come out ahead no no i mean like get some money oh, yeah. <laughs> okay but i mean in in but uh but no if i have powers superheroes definitely but if you're just a guy no yeah you kidding me right it's like i mean what, what like I you're gonna fight? get you're gonna get killed yeah if there <laughs> comes some super you're gonna be you're then. gonna be killed or super bored right Ribbon cuttings again with the ribbon. No, cuttings. I mean like think about it. Like let's just say we're looking regular old reality like we live in. Mm -hmm. You train really hard and you're gonna put on a costume and you're gonna go patrol and look for crime to fight. A lot of that time is gonna be like just boring crap until you get to the fighting. Right. You know. They skip that part in the comic books. They skip the getting to. Or they're hanging around. All yeah. they do is get to like the, the fun It's part. They'll like do a panel like, oh, he's doing a lot of lab work or staking out a thing. And and implying that it's spent a lot of time is spent. But you don't see like a whole issue of just like, oh, I'm going to stake out, like eating a sandwich. Like, oh, i got to go pee. You know, like <laughs> right. that kind of thing. That but that, some but, good drama. But I that, have to pee and there's no bathroom. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> no, but I mean, in, in reality, like... Real life is boring. That's why we read comic books. That's true. That's true. That's why <laughs> so, we talk about them. And I think that's the most imp mm -hmm. I mean, a fact from, okay, forget about superpowers, but like just being a non powered superhero, it would be just so boring. You would have, and you couldn't have a real life. So you'd have to be a boring person. You would just a boring, be intense. Be fated guy. to be boring for the rest of your life. Yeah. So, so but, I think I'd say no. Yeah. I think we got to wrap this episode up. I'm okay with that. Okay. Adios.